Well, hello everyone and welcome to Door Bumper Clear. My name is Casey Boat, your official babysitter of these three. How many times do you think you can say the word babysitter in a season? Um, you want to keep going? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, because every, every time the way, you introduce so. yourself, you, you <laughs> announce yourself as our babysitter. If you were a babysitter, really can we come up with a different word maybe? Please, or, by all means. If she was a babysitter, she would have Stop a very low Stop acting like children rating. and we will be okay. Uh, you would sure. not hire Casey because she would never show up. <laughs> She wouldn't get to babysit long because the mom would fire her because she leaves such a mess behind. <laughs> and she doesn't show up. Yeah, I'm TJ late. Majors, by the way. She'd be late. The kid would be running around the house don't, by himself. Don't mess with me. My hormones <laughs> are a mess. So. Tell, tell me what that means. Yeah, what does that mean? Don't mess with me. Just yeah. don't. No, well, what do you, when your hormones are a mess, what does that mean? Like, it means F around and find out. Does that mean you have hot or flashes? Or? No, that's, I think that's menopause. Are you hungry? Oh. I am very hungry. All I want <laughs> is Olive Garden and Cool Ranch Doritos and Papa John's Olive pizzas. Garden. I don't know why. Soup salad and breadsticks sound so good right now. There's one right down the road. I know. I know. Anyways, uh, who we got here in the studio? I'm TJ. I Congratulations. You still TJ? I'm, I, I just I already did that. But oh, you did hey, it. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who are you? Griffin. Oh, cool. Spotter <laughs> for Richard Childress Racing this year. I think my first race is in a big state. Uh, Freddie, what's up? Hey, how are you? <laughs> This, in, this new intro deal goes really well. This is, well, not, this is 17 years. 17 years it. of doing it the same way. Let's, yeah. let's flip it up and see what we now can Now we do. don't know what the hell we're doing. <laughs> well, um, what's up? I'm still Freddie Kraft. I still spot for Bubba Wallace, <laughs> Kyle Sieg, and Ty Dillon this weekend. Did you get to spot the Xfinity race this week? I did. We actually we yeah, did. Just like, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean. we had Kyle Sieg. It was, uh, did you make it on Ky- fuel? Kyle, no. I <laughs> ran out the same lap as every other Ford. So. <laughs> We had I don't, there was a, Kyle had a long night. Poor Kyle, he called me after the race and he was he had himself a, uh, an interesting night. Did he have a day? He had a day. Yeah, Radio, he, he, the, I know he's Ryan C's brother, right? Yes. And do, he, do they are they teammates? Yes. Yeah. yeah everything. And it sounds to me like they do a lot of the work. Ryan and Kyle on the cars. I don't, you know, it's kind of a I don't. It's the four car team right now this year, so they have a lot of stuff going on. And you know, they they as it, as any four car team is, you need to have the right people in place. And I'm sure they're working on getting it, but. You know they're they're they they're have some growing pains right now. Notice like, or <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> Does Joel still spot for them? Because I saw he was in. Atlanta. No, Joel. Joel flew in. I Joel had the truck race only, so he, he <laughs> was in and out. He's <laughs> like, my favorite part. Would you see Jeff Green and and Jeff Burton picking on him on Twitter? Because yeah. Joel just doesn't. Obviously, Joel is a very big fan of NASCAR and everything that has to do with NASCAR. And never says anything bad about him. And then he's, <laughs> here he is, not still. He's retired, but he's been in every race so he's far. He's been this retiring. Year. <laughs> he's been retiring for like six years, man. Like I thought, the one more year was last year. Now it's like half year. I mean, we're down to half. We're, Ooh, yeah, we're, we, we're, we're weaning ourselves off of NASCAR. <laughs> so, do we know Joel's Cup schedule for spotting? I don't know that he's doing a cup. Oh, he's doing. Yeah, yeah I think he's doing no, four he races. Is. I think he's doing everything Riley Herbst runs. Okay, so we got to get him in here Monday after one of the plate races, yeah. Super Speedway races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be good. Maybe yeah. it should be the I last hope. one, just in case. <laughs> 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 yeah, we have to. Have, I mean, he's the most popular guest I think we've ever had on here. So he was. hundred percent. He uh, he's he's definitely he had a lot of quotes. Character. In I that think he was race. a top five most listened to show last year, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh yeah. He, he was, was third yes. or fourth, I think. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Jesse Love was up there too. The guy that was the most, the, the guy that was the most pop, poor Jesse Love. We'll get to that, I'm sure. But the, the most popular show from last year, that guy did not have a good weekend. He's not had a good year so far. He had. He might want a haircut. He got a flat. Immediate, like he might have had more fun in Atlanta last year sitting in the hall than he had this year. Yeah. He Dude, got a flat Jesse? early. No, uh, oh, Josh yeah. Williams. He got a oh, flat yeah. early in the Xfinity races, a bunch of laps down. Then it, I think he crashed in the Xfinity, in the Cup race too. Right? Oh yeah, he, he did. did. He crashed. He yeah. was so god, just yeah. yeah. Poor guy. Well, third closest finish in NASCAR history, and our amigo Daniel Suarez gets it done. What do you guys think of the race? I mean, maybe TJ. I don't. I don't know if you want to answer, but uh, everybody I else. Mean, I didn't think the race was bad. I thought the race. It's worse than Daytona for a spotter. It's fun. It uh, is. <laughs> it, it needs to be for as intense as it is. We can just cut that thing in half because there's enough excitement in half of a race. For a full race. Bubba gave me the old, like, he's like, all right, man, just stay calm up there. And I'm like, I'm calm, but you can't yeah. talk fast enough. Like, like stuff happens no. so yeah. fast. It's like, I, you know, I'm sure my octave was getting higher because I just, like, I was an auctioneer. I could not stop talking. Like, yeah. You text me after race how fun it was. On lap two, how fun was it? <laughs> oh, dude, I ain't never <laughs> seen it. Do you see all the black marks on the track? I'm like, oh, yeah. my gosh. So that, start, that started with just a dumb move, and maybe it's a what idiot contender. You know, which one we're you going it down to? the front stretch and... 
skill and just stops to try and let his teammate yeah. up. Like, okay. just you so can't, you do that. Is that is that a product of no practice? No, no, no. It's just a product of your like everybody going into it watched the race the night before, and I think most of the people thought the top was going to be very dominant. You know, you watching two races. You know, nobody could pass Jesse Love all night. The kid led the whole race, I think. And then the truck race, kind of the same thing. The only time the bottom got going is when Kyle was down there making it work. Um, so I think everybody was so concerned that the top was going to be dominant that the, the 34 got trapped on the bottom. The 38's just checking up to let him up because they think they need to be on top. They think the 34 is going to get hung, and he just terrible. I mean, the start finish Everyone's line, he's so stopping. tight right there. And man. we're just, it's just an accordion effect. And then unfortunately, Austin Dillon, two weeks in a row, gets spit out of the crowd there. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, so that was that had nothing to do with practice. I mean, obviously practice would have been nice, but it had, that had nothing to do with practice. I don't think. Hey, did you think um, <clears throat> to answer me this? Did they did the start get messed up? Yes, because I, I was like, I was look before the race started. I was like, I wonder if they're gonna do this right, and they didn't. How no, so? It was me- oh, yeah. Well, the I don't lineup. So the lineup. So the front row was the thirty four and the twenty two. So thirty four is on the pole. Thirty four is on the pole. He's qualified first. Twenty two is on the outside. You're supposed to. The 34 is supposed to choose his lane at one to go on the st- when we get to the start finish line. When they take one to go, he's supposed to choose what lane he wants. After after everything's already set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at coming to one to go, they're supposed to move the penalty cars. So the 22 is supposed to be in the outside lane. When they leave the pit road um, practice, the 34 takes the top early. Well, now the 22 is on the bottom. So they drop the 22 to the bottom while the whole inside row moves up when technically – the whole outside row should have yeah. moved up, but and of course they didn't catch it or didn't care to catch it. So, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it could it's have been. It's a huge deal when you wreck on when lap you, two. When you wreck on lap two, and there's you know, that's a huge deal. So, well, Kyle went from third to the pole, yeah, essentially uh, inside front row, and then he led the race from it for a while. So, it's a big deal. You know, when there's penalty cars, you look what row they're in, and you see if you gain spots because it is a big deal. It all matters. Yeah, and, for sure. Uh, yeah, so maybe. Maybe that I don't know. I mean, but the weird part about it was is the twenty twos in the bottom. They put him in the back, and then they're like, "All right, you're on the outside row in the back." Yeah, and then like, <laughs> like it just didn't make any sense. I don't know. So I want y'all's perspective on it because y'all were there. Why was the truck race and the Xfinity race arguably two of the worst races in NASCAR history? And then the very next day, we have one of the best races in NASCAR I, history. Is it? It's not the track. No, I. Well, I what is I, it with those two what, series? What made it a bad race for the Xfinity and truck? They're not racing. It's a parade. It's a train. See, last year was the complete opposite with Xfinity because they all went in the fir- in turn three for the first time and all about wrecked. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I was talking to Jordan Bianchi before the race started, and I said, you know, obviously last night was awful. I thought those were two terrible races, like not to take anything away from Jesse Love, but you shouldn't be able to lead 157 of whatever you led, like 165 laps where you ran out of yeah. gas. Um, <clears throat> and I said, listen, the, the – I didn't have a lot of optimism about the bottom, but I knew it would be better because just for the sole purpose of our guy, the cup guys are better than yeah. the Xfinity guys. And like I said, you could see the bottom lane take off in the truck race when Kyle led it. You know, Kyle knew what to do, how to lead it, and, and obviously had a very strong truck, which you needed. And I think that played part in the, in the Xfinity race, too, where the 2 and the 22 are the two fastest cars on the racetrack. So if you put one of them out front, you're probably not going to get around them, so you're better off. You know, a lot of guys are timid to make that move now. We've seen it. Michael Annette won the Daytona Xfinity race for that same reason. Like, guys are just afraid to get out of line because they know if, if it doesn't work right away, then you're going to the back. You know, we saw it with, I think it was AJ late in the race. Got You know, somebody got to his outside. He went straight to the back. So, you know, I think guys are a little timid to make a move when you have a really strong car leading because if you don't get clear, then you're going to the back um but yeah i think just the i honestly just the talent level you know i think is what produces we see it all the time in, in every race you know some racetracks where you just the rate the other races are not great obviously xfinity we think is always great like mile and a half compared to the cup races but i think something like that where you need to get talent. i was curious if you thought it was the amount of good cars or trucks because obviously in cup you've got 30 plus cars that are going to keep up and be in that lead pack and be able to create that energy in Xfinity, if we're honest with each other, there's 15 to 18 teams that are really, really fast and funded. So I didn't. I was curious what you guys thought caused the racing to be so bad. Honestly, to me, it's the, it's the drivers in the, in the cars. So everyone goes back and watches videos of the last race, and everyone's like, "Oh man, you got to get in that top lane." So they all come out of these meetings. Man, we got to be in the top. We got to be in yeah. the top. So then, now they all have a fear of going to the bottom, which I think I think it'll evolve and I think it'll change once these guys. 
once they see a guy like Kyle run that race and be like, oh, okay, well, we can run the bottom and make it work. This is how we do it now. So next race, we go back there. We might see all these guys line up down there and not, you know what I mean? I just think it's evolving. And last races there, I thought were pretty messy. I mean, they last, were messy. They yeah, were messy. They were and messy. this one's the opposite. We, we, we were fearful to go back there because they were so messy. Yeah, and, 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 these ones and the, the racing opposite, was so bad so. Saturday, I was afraid of what Sunday was going to hold. Yeah. Um, I ask you this too, real quick. Um, front row motorsports. They've never been on the front row in their lives until this year. It doesn't seem like like those guys are hauling ass. Why is it? Uh, well, they, well, no, they, they they've qualified. I mean, in. I know they've jumped up to be a tier one tier OEM, one, tier one before, OEM. But but you don't just overnight, man. Holy cow! They switched alliances, right? They're not. They're with yeah. Penske now versus I think they were with RFK in the past. Um, I uh, think they've been qualifying decent at plate races here. They did yeah. last year, and I'm yeah. not surprised at this. But I also think you're not surprised. Ty Gilliland led over 50 laps. So far uh, I mean, that the amount of laps that he led, um, you know, and as aggressive as he was, I thought he did a really good job. Um, that was surprising. What was surprising to me was it was that it was him and not McDowell because McDowell is supposed to be the, the savvy veteran that's really good at plate racing stuff. But I know that their cars, they – I mean, obviously they're trimmed out. Yeah, that was, the, that was one thing I took away from it. They were really good out front. When they got in the pack, Todd struggled pretty big like he yeah. there was two or three times where i thought he was wrecking off a turn two if he could get air on his nose yeah. if he could get air on the nose he was pretty good but he couldn't i mean not that the car wasn't good but it was more of a struggle and i honestly think you know i think we'll see how it really goes these next the next two races are going to be or this next week will be uh, more of a sign of how it's going to be you got for bumps sure. you got for you sure know. um brad i believe had a foot cam in in his car and it was pretty cool to see the closer he'd get to the front, obviously, the more he was wide open. Oh, yeah. Um, but there were some times where when he was, like, fifth or sixth in line, he was lifting a ton. He would use a brake getting into three. Oh, yeah. So uh, Fox did a really good job. Um, I mean, I'm not trying to discount what they did in Daytona, but they did a really good job of having a really good broadcast yesterday as opposed to what I saw for the Daytona 500. The camera angles, I mean, Dale Jr. tweeted they were shooting too tight, which – I think I've said that on the show. I know I've tweeted yeah. it before. The pictures are so good. They look it looks so good, but you you want to see the, the whole story. I don't want to see the detail in that headlight. I want to see who's making a run three four cars back. If we had to spot based on the TV, we wouldn't be able to do it because yeah. they shoot so tight. And being a spotter, I want to see the bigger picture so you can see where the energy's coming yeah. from. But overall, Casey, I thought it was a really 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 good race, really really good broadcast, and thank goodness. TJ. What? They made it very clear. What? On the <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why I have what? to comment. Yeah. Um, on the broadcast, obviously, Brad, I think, got loose and, you know, had a bit of a wreck. What was going on? How was communication with, with you guys? Was there anything that could have avoided that? Uh, I mean, we didn't really have anybody in front of us at that point in time. It, you're just – you're playing offense and defense at the same time. And at that point in the race – you, when you're on the outside lane, you have to be defensive of the middle and the high side, and the five kind of went to the corner a little bit higher than us out back, and we'd been running the same kind of line where you kind of go in not really in the middle, not really on the top, so the guy really can't make a move, and and um, I don't know. It, I mean, it just snaps so quick. I didn't even see him wiggle. It just snaps, so I'm not 100% sure, you know, if something didn't happen, but it looked like Chris did the same thing earlier, but our car was really good. Really, uh, really stable. He was happy with it, and if Brad's not happy with a car, like he wasn't happy with it in the beginning of the race, so we, he didn't push anything. He, I mean, we kind of fell back, and uh, you know, the high teens, maybe, um, low twenties, just saving a car, and then we got the car good, and and he was able to go. So, I mean, no, I don't think that's a communication thing at all. I think that's uh, just guys going forward at the end of the race. I mean, every time somebody gets a pass through penalty to start the race, we have a caution yeah. in two laps Harvick, to save them. Bristol, Harvick, Bristol. I forget there. I mean, it feels like every time yeah. it happens, like there's a caution to save yeah. the race there. What was the issue with Joey? <laughs> uh, I, so I don't know. I heard 47 different things. I want to see a picture of the glove. So I heard it wasn't had to do with the gloves, but it, like, no, it's it had just, to do with the gloves. It's definitely the glove. It's, it, I, yeah. I think, I think it's a combination of things. So it, it uh, <coughs> From what I understand, at Daytona, there was some people complaining about him pulling his window net forward during his qualifying lap to get the pole. Then, obviously, there was something. They're obviously cracking down on uh, SFI ratings because the picker yeah. guy's got a big mandate this week to make sure. I don't know if a lot of guys, picker guys, don't they use gloves, but don't use maybe SFI rated gloves. 
So there was a big mandate that went out about that this week about, you know, we're coming to check. You better have the right stuff on. I think it's like head socks and everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The whole everything head to toe uh, SFI. So then uh, I don't I don't know. I heard there was some webbing in the glove maybe to make it flow air better. Although there was. Yeah. You can I, they I have pictures of it. it. Yeah. Uh, can I see it? Pictures. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was somebody. Had, somebody had sent me a video last night that I thought was interesting where you can see him. He finishes his qualifying lap Daytona and only takes off his left glove and pulls the window net down. So it's like, you know, obviously he probably didn't have, he doesn't need both two gloves like that. He just needs the one. To, what they're doing is if it's a webbed glove, he's putting it in the window. You see the guys, if you watch qualifying, you can see the guys stick their hand up in the window to deflect air from coming in the car. And it just, it helps. I don't know how much, but it helps. Oh, it would help a ton. Yeah. And if you got it, if you can way make, less, if gotta you can be less dragged by a bigger, lot, right? Yeah. Like we give Tyler Reddick because he's so small, he can barely get his hand up there. So he's like, He's trying. He's like trying to slide down to the seat to get his his long he's little. He's just SR. sitting in a booster seat for qualifying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So so, I, so do you think the penalty yesterday is enough, or do you think <clears throat> that he should be fined? Um, it's just blatant cheating. So listen, what was Chandler Smith's penalty? He didn't put a head sock on. Yeah, but I'm saying it's an SFI penalty. It was it was what twenty five thousand or ten thousand. Yeah, Ton of money for an Xfinity I, Series. I can't remember. It was ten or twenty five thousand. I thought it was fifteen, but it might be. Yeah, but that's a lot of money for an Xfinity is, Series it, this driver. This is the same thing. Um, Zoom in. It won't. I don't think you can do that. This, I this I is can't the same tell thing. Tell the size of it like it, that. You, yeah. <laughs> if look. you zoom in, it gets bigger. Yeah, <laughs> zoom in. Look, you can kind of see. It. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so you, yeah. So, I mean, this is they, this. They claim the same thing. It wasn't an SFI rated product, so it's essentially not wearing <clears> SFI. <throat> So it should be some kind of fine if they're going to be consistent. Well, Joey is, is an F SFI product, but it was modified. Oh. And you're not allowed to modify it. That's what I read. So like maybe, you, I mean, it should still be some kind of fine. I yeah, would you think. can't give them. I, that's what I. That's what they said on the I think the, a video, TV or something. On a similar note, and I think I heard somebody somebody tweeted about your comment during the truck race, the the roof. So just falling <laughs> off. So the fucking. <laughs> so Ty Dillon, I was spotting for Ty Dillon and. Uh, the yellow comes down. I said, there's no wreck. I'm like, it must be debris. He's like, yeah, I just got hit with a roof. And I'm like, is this guy crazy? I'm like, what is he talking about, a roof? And then the 41 comes around, and it's a convertible. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And if you looked at the 25 truck at the end of the race, like it about blew the windshield out of our – like it must have hit us flush because the, the roof was caved in. It blew the camera off. The, the windshield was – it ruined our day. But yeah. like these guys are cheating. And what I heard this morning, I heard there's a rule coming Easy. out. Easy, that's my truck, man. Oh, well, don't cheat. Calm the hell down, So, Freddy. And I heard there was, I heard. Your I truck was a convertible? Yeah. It ended up being a convertible. So <laughs> I got a funny story. So I'm at a dance recital. I, actually, not a dance recital, a dance competition. And Mike Hillman's wife, her kids take dance oh, there. Yeah. And Mike Hillman is your crew chief on this truck, TJ, right? He, yeah, oh yeah, he's big time involved there too. So, so Mike Hillman, great guy, been around forever. That makes sense. Um, so, <laughs> so I walk out in the hallway. Well, I saw on Twitter that somebody lost their roof, but I didn't know who it was. And so I walk out in the hallway, and she looks at me, and she goes, "Why would a roof come off a truck?" And I said, "Well, I don't have any idea." So I go back in, and I find a picture, and I come back out, and I was like, "It honestly looks like windshield braces broke, and they created a gap, and then obviously air gets under it." And she goes. Well, that was Mike's truck. And I said, that was Hillman's truck? She goes, yeah. She said, I pray to God they don't suspend him. I can't deal with him being home every weekend. <laughs> so yeah. there was – and it looked like if you watched, like I think it was Gluck or somebody was tweeting because remember Homestead last year, the 38 truck, who did it again apparently, um, had that yeah, deal, had the deal where the their, their, their windshield braces broke or, or loosened up and the, the windshield was caved in to gain downforce. And um, – it looked just same. It looked the same as on the forty one. The forty one's windshields caved in for a while, and then obviously it creates a gap, and it ends up blowing the roof off. But then I heard, I heard there was seven or eight trucks at After Tech that had issues with their with their uh, windshield braces. So supposedly there's a rule coming out this morning about how now you a, a different way to make sure you fasten them, and they have to leave tonight to go to te, uh, Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. So I mean, it's gonna be it's a tight squeeze for them guys, but it's the old TJ just said it around and find out. You keep. Pushing the rules as far as you can, and your roof's gonna blow off eventually. <laughs> Look, all I know is that early on in the race, Bailey said I hit something, and it got worse and worse and worse. So, and I don't like. I've worked with Hillman for years, and he's by the book. I mean, he's by the book. And Bailey, is, he did say he hit something, I mean, and then he sat there and watched the, it the entire I, time. I don't know about by the book. I mean, the guy won a thousand truck races with Todd Bodine. I'm pretty sure he wasn't 100 percent legal. Those are those re days. They're, they're good. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, I don't like I it, like it kept getting worse and worse, and I could see it down the front stretch. Like I could see it, and no, no, I'm not talking about the roof. I'm talking about the window. I'm like, oh, this, something's happening. Hang on, a yeah. Second. So <laughs> speaking of cheeking, cheeking, cheeking. <laughs> speaking of cheating, speaking of cheeking, speaking of cheating, does anybody get caught cheating and not win as often as Stuart Haas? Like the sons of <laughs> have been caught. Like it's a couple times a year, it seems like since we went to this new yeah. car. Well, and, and I what was it? Roof rails this week. They like two cars I, got caught. Yeah, with like it. I get like Hendrick got hammered last year or two years ago for them louvers, but they were hauling ass when they did it. Like <laughs> this is the third or fourth time Stuart Haas has got a penalty, and they haven't been that good in two years. You well, know, like, got to get better. It's not like getting maybe, caught. Let's, I mean, let, maybe well, maybe just like let's try to get the cars better. Let's, let's well, stop trying to cheat. Let's stop one trying time. to cheat and just try to. They try got to, caught with that rear window the one time or whatever. Who's that? Harvick. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. They keep but, getting caught. Yeah, but he caught. won, didn't oh, he? No. D- did he win? No. Uh, well, yeah, maybe. that might have been. It was maybe like Vegas won. or something. Yeah, that was two years ago, right? Because he didn't that was win like last two year. or three. Yeah, that was a while ago. Yeah, that. But that might have been their last win. But but like it's just I don't know. I don't get it. Like it's. I mean, I guess I literally had like when I when the season started, I put a list together and said, all right, who's on the hot seat? And I said, every SHR driver, like there isn't one driver that I would look at and say they're safe. Yeah. No. Limbo. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Barry's probably safe. Yeah, I was going to say Josh is probably the safest because I feel like you don't he you know, he's a rookie and um, I feel like we're getting ready to find out how good he is. Yeah, but I, I mean, I honestly thought he ran a pretty good Daytona 500, quietly ran up up near the front half of the field, and then he was running decent this I, race, too. I so. think this weekend we find out how good he is. And how well, yeah, we're not going to know until we can start going to some of these real I mean, racetracks. It's, it's easy to go get in the nine car. I and, mean, right now, Todd Gillen and, and, and um, Michael McDowell look like the stars of the series. So Absolutely. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> Prior to the race and even during the race, I know Chastain and Josh Williams were very vocal about the fact that there was no practice. I mean, Brett, you are also very so vocal dumb. on Twitter. What I mean, what do you guys think? You're not a big, you're not a popular guy on the spotter stand right now. But I don't, I, I, I don't have to spot, so I don't, I don't give think a he's, shit. Has he ever been? This is what, what, what's what? Do you know what your first race is? Can you say what your first race is? Or it's no? in a big state. What? I don't know what that means, but so <laughs> Texas? Pro, oh, it's probably next week or no, it's probably Coda. Yeah, but that's definitely we're gonna have Coda. practice, and this summer we'll be bitching that we're there. Oh, we gotta go five, five, five minutes of practice. Ridiculous. <laughs> But do you guys agree? Should there oh, have yeah. been? Oh, yeah, 100. He'll leave there being like, "This is stupid." <laughs> They're paying me so much money. I watch all the practice. Y'all won't. <laughs> I Look, hope here, you- here's the deal, though. Okay. The drivers that that aren't veterans. Imagine going into the truck series as a rookie and having to race against Matt Crafton, who has a gazillion starts in that series at these tracks. Imagine going to. Atlanta for the first time as a rookie. I mean, Jesse Love obviously proved you can do it in a rocket ship, but practicing the little things, man, coming to pit road, getting in your pit stall, um, knowing where your lifting points are, like they're screwing these drivers and teams completely over by not practicing. I think are the teams not the ones that want it? Well, the teams want to save money, but is that really helping your sport? Because I think if, the- if we had practiced on – Friday for the Xfinity Series and the Truck Series. Would so you're those two when you races? Atlanta. Would those two races have looked like absolute garbage, like they did? Probably. Like I just think the drivers deserve. Yeah, I don't think it's an matter. opportunity to go out there and practice. I don't think it's. I think. You, I think if you took a poll in the garage, L- let's poll the crew chiefs and the drivers. Uh, crew chiefs and drivers will want practice. The owners, I think, would like to just keep it the way it is. Owners, of course, they owners would. Yeah, save spot, money. Owners and spotters would. <laughs> Hey, if I were spotting, I wouldn't want to practice either because I don't need practice. And I'm not saying that arrogantly. Like, I don't need to go up there and watch I practice. Mean, it doesn't make me a better spotter. But hey, let me ask you this. What have you ever done in practice to make you a better spotter? But are you going to – you go to Atlanta is – if you go out there and practice, your first time there, you're going to go out there by yourself. You're going to hold it wide open. How, how is that even getting any practice for the race, really? Are you going to be in a pack, a 30-car, 30 30-truck 30 pack? No. If so I get are you to really do learning that, anything in practice? If I get to do that – and I have a problem with my car and or my driver area or what a tire going down or whatever, at least I get to go out there and know that. What if you cut a tire? Versus practice? going out there, <laughs> then you wreck. Versus, you going, versus going out there and trying to make the Daytona 500 on time and you don't get practice. That's the I, dumbest I shit think, ever. Um, I mean, I do, I do think there's – I do think you could use a little bit of practice. Like one practice for the Daytona 500 might be, you know what I mean, like an hour long. 30, 30 minutes, something. Yeah, just something like that. But I mean, we have it everywhere else. But I don't, I don't think at Atlanta. Like, I really don't. I don't think a. Um, and when we do have practice, it's too short. 
Oh, oh my I'm gosh. Sure he is. He's a. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot coming up, TJ. Jeez, you give it to oh man. Um, <laughs> just before we get going. Um, We're not going yet? Uh, well, before we get into spot on, spot off, I should say. Um, tungsten butt plugs. Does anybody, anybody have any opinions on tungsten Damn. butt plugs? <laughs> Who tweeted I that? think we were the first. Oh my people. gosh! Cole. I think I think we were the first people to ever say that these drivers needed to weigh in in their underwear. Like I think if you go back years ago to one of our shows, we said it because I would watch Elliot Sadler get dressed if you <laughs> in the motorhome before he go weigh in. That was weird. Okay, <laughs> but but if you would have like you would see these guys go weigh in. They used to weigh in in their fire suits, right? Yes, and yeah, and you would it would sound like a hardware store walking by you when they <laughs> but they had on their <laughs> listen they had on. <laughs> I mean, Elliot would have on several layers of clothes under his fire suit. Oh yeah, <laughs> with stuff in his pockets. I, Sterling in like '05, maybe Sterling come in the <laughs> he opened up the bolt bin in the in the jaw <laughs> and just started showing stuff. <laughs> that oh. was 15 years ago. Or that was 20. Hey, that's 20 years 20 ago, almost now. A long time ago. Oh, that, that, hell, I got a way in. <laughs> I might explain why Martin's in such a good mood all the time. For all those years at the '78 together. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh. Hey, you know what drove me crazy again about this week? By the way, no, I, the guy I that guess. starts the big wreck with five Makes to go wins the race. I did like yeah. Alex's comments. Is like <laughs> he said, uh, everybody got mad at me or whatever, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they cheered me, me. <laughs> when I finished second. <laughs> he said they all wanted to kill me for starting a big wreck, and then they all thought I won the race. <laughs> Keep in mind, when we go back the next time we go back to this place, first playoff race. I know. <sighs> yeah, I'll tell you what. Like I said, I said that it was fun to spot last night. I wouldn't want to do it every week. No, absolutely but, not. But I don't want to do that fun. every week. It was fun. But it, that I, I would assume, I don't know, I would assume the, the first playoff race would be a little more mild just because guys are going to have to be a little more conservative. You're going to regret that. But <clears throat> That's what you say now. Totally. Gonna, he's going to eat those words. I, yeah. I, I, think, I mean, I would hope that's the case because like, I feel like the second race of the year, you're all out. Don't matter. I, 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 I hope that's the case, too, because I had to spot my ass off on the second lap for I went whatever through, it was. I went through two batteries last night, which I never go, which was yeah. a little chilly at night. But like, I, I never, I usually don't go through one a race, and that was two. Just, I mean, I never came off the button. Yeah, but I was, was like, I'm tired of hearing you talk. I said, there was uh, <laughs> he yeah. tweeted he didn't want to read a tweet from you. <laughs> That's how tired of hearing you. I talk call, to we us. have like a team chat. And he said he said a, we have this video they play every week, like a hype video. And uh, I said, hey, when you get a chance, give me a call. I got to talk to you about a couple of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, then I got Brad saying, oh, keep it up. I keep giving all that info under one of the cautious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bubba likes the info. He just I, I think he just gets tired of the sound of my voice. Hey, <laughs> next time he's in the pack, just shut up for a laugh. Yeah, see just, what he says. Yeah, what you like somebody, that, huh? <laughs> somebody had a problem yesterday. I forget who it was, but their battery, like their battery went dead or something happened and their, their radio didn't work for a lap. And I'm like, oh, now he knows how much you need him. <laughs> like, yeah. If you get alone, left alone for two laps, it's a big deal sometimes. The wait is almost over, North Carolina. FanDuel, America's number one sports book, is coming to your state. On March 11th, you'll finally be able to bet on all your favorite teams in all your favorite sports. With FanDuel, there's tons of ways for you to get in on the action. You can bet on everything from the money line to over-unders to which team will win this year's tobacco road rivalry all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, with live betting, you can even pick which player will put up the next bucket and the one after that. See for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Just go to FanDuel.com slash DBC so you can be the first to know when FanDuel goes live in North Carolina. That's FanDuel.com slash DBC. Make every moment more with FanDuel. 21 and up and present in NC. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. Availability subject to regulatory approval. Well, just quickly before we head into spot on, spot off, obviously one of the best finishes in NASCAR history yesterday. How would you rank that among some of the others, such as a 20, 2007 Daytona with Harvick and Martin, Mark Martin and Ambrose and Kozlowski? We've got, oh, Harvick and Gordon for so, uh, Atlanta. Yeah, so I, I'm more, I, I still kind of put this in the super speedway realm of finishes. I think them other, like the Darlington, Craven, Kurt Busch battle, I think was way better than this because they're, this this is still plate racing, you know. Like those it, dudes are on the edge. Yeah, they're just driving the shit out of it. These guys are just <clears throat> wide open, and yeah. and like the thing that decided, the, like Bubba basically decided the race. We go in the corner, and and got tight. You know, like, I'm sure I think he was going to try and square Blaney up and push Blaney to the win because obviously they're friends. 
and and we get tight and lose all our momentum. You know, the, like we had a lot of damage from the first wreck. Our splitter was killed, so we were tight all race. Anytime we had you know air on our nose, and he goes in the corner and gets tight. And if he doesn't get tight, I think he pushes Blaney to the wind easily off of four. Um, but then we, you know, so this is just these guys are wide open. Drag racing down the front. Obviously, it's a great finish. I mean, don't take anything away from the finish, but I think those the Watkins Glen races where these guys are just driving the out of it for a whole lap yeah. off the track and bouncing off each other the the darlington craven that those things I mean, they're a little bouncing bit higher off the for fence me. Yeah. yeah the cars are sideways literally they can't get the throttle down these guys have no problem getting the throttle down on this finish you know what it, like and I, what i was surprising with this is like going down the backstretch i'm like oh blaney's in a really good spot here then like the pack swallowed him yeah and i was like how did they get three wide that quick into three and um, but it, it was a good finish. I, I think it's up there. But here's the problem with us three in There's terms one. of or you in, in terms of how we rank the finish. Yes, it's a super close finish. Yes, it's an exciting finish. But how much talent did it take to run the last lap for those guys that were three wide coming across the start finish line? I there and, and I'm not saying they're not talented. I'm just saying at this particular style of racing. We're not looking at them white knuckling it, wrestling the car, the car control, the yeah. things that we think make a great finish as racers versus fans watching what, at home. What, I, what brought me to that conclusion was Daniel made two really big mistakes in the last lap and won the race just because of the circumstances behind him. You know, he's he's leading the top line. He gets a good block on Blaney, you know, off of two. And then he pulls back down and lets Blaney drive by him on the outside to where Blaney can get clear. Then he gets clear. So now they, they, they flop the leader line. Blaney put, blocks the bottom. Daniel gets back outside, which is a good move. But now here they come down the backstretch. They leave the middle so open that Kyle, you know, Bubba's shoving Kyle. Kyle's got enough room to go through the middle of the two of them, which could never happen. You know, he should be tied on Blaney. And, and the two of them, you know, decide the race amongst each other. Well, now they bring the eight into the picture because they've left a hole. Blaney pulled down <clears throat> during that same time. Yeah, if yeah. there was a mistake on the last lap, I would say it's probably more on Blaney in the three. Yeah, oh, I know, but I'm just saying, like, but, if, if, I mean, if you, you got it, like, you know, this is better than, like, you have to keep that middle closed up. Like, if you're on the top, you know, whatever it is, if Blaney moves down, you got to move down with him because you don't yeah. want to invite anybody else in there. And I didn't know, like, I'm counting Bubba down because we got a good push off of two. And I'm thinking that we're going to get boxed, you know, we're going to be boxed in behind Blaney and, and the eight's going to have to push him. And then I'm just counting him down to Blaney. And then all of a sudden, the eight darts middle. And I'm like, oh, shit. okay. Well, then I knew kind of Bubba was probably going to want to go with the 12. So I'm like, just fill the bottom. And then we go in the corner and push. But if we don't push, the 99 loses because, you know, so that's why I don't think, you know, it's just kind of circumstantial about what happens behind you. Well, honestly, it's a lot of luck. Yeah. That's how, that's how, like, you know, at the, these play races, it's kind of like you got to be lucky. And oh. I feel like he was kind of lucky right there how it worked out. Same thing with, you know, you got, there's this, there's obviously these guys are skilled, but. If you look at some of the end of 500s, Denny didn't, for a couple of these, he didn't even, he didn't, like, the guy wrecked in front of him, right? And look at these Talladegas. You know, you get you get a shove at the end of the backstretch, you get clear, then they race behind you, and no one ever gets back to you. Or the guy gets shoved so far out front, like uh, Newman did at Tal, was it, where did, was that Tal, someone got shoved out front at Talladega, and then they just come into the dog leg. I mean, the whole group got to him and passed him. It's just all kind of how luck, I mean, you got to have, the right push at the right time and it's just that's how it works out a lot it's not that you're out driving a guy it's who gets to your bumper and shoves you so it's a great finish it'll go down as one of the greatest closest ever and for me it's just not top 10 i mean it yeah, might be top just, 10 but i mean it's, it's not top 10 <clears throat> for me it's, I, it's it's just a it's another close plate finish to me it's like I you mean, know what i what i appreciate about that finish is these guys all raced super hard and we showed this is the difference in the Xfinity and truck. They wouldn't be able to do that in the Xfinity and truck. They wouldn't be able to cross the line or run four wide like that. These guys 100% not showed how how talented they are Like in this race, obviously, after the second lap. That, that one clip you see, of, I think it's Sindrick, peels off to the bottom and goes in and clears everybody. But yeah. then they get four wide behind <clears> them, and they're coming down the backstretch with that straight-on shot, like head-on yeah. down the back straightaway. And you can see, I think it's Truex, is like – they're four wide, and he's literally like, there's just not enough room. And he's kind of like leaning on each leaning other, on each other oh, yeah. down the backstretch, however fast we're going. You know, yeah. it's like, imagine just like, it's like, go on the highway today and just try to imagine four cars in three lanes. You know what I mean? And like, just, well, you're all like, just yeah. on top of you each other. It is wide, super exciting to watch. <laughs> it's super exciting to yeah. spot. It's super exciting, apparently, to drive because the drivers were ranting about it, how great it was. Um, but it's a lot of circumstance to get you. Yeah, there's a lot of things position. that have to go right. You know, and one thing that I don't think translates like Austin Hill at these plate races, 
that we've just ran, he wants to lead on the last lap because he knows they are going to wreck behind him. And you can see that's his plan every year. Every year he just does the same thing. He gets out front and lets everybody wreck behind him. And I think if you looked at how many of these finishes finished under yellow with them wrecking, I think it's probably at least half of them. I know it was this week, right? Did they wreck this week or that? Uh, no, I don't think so. <clears throat> they I ran out of gas. This yeah, week. There wasn't was enough yeah, people yeah. out there to I wreck. I think like Truex hit the wall, but one, there one wasn't One thing a that you got to commend this car on that we have been very tough on at a lot of times, especially at short tracks and at super speedways, saying this car sucks. One thing that this car did not do yesterday, it didn't suck when y'all all wrecked. Thank goodness, you know, 20 cars wreck and 18 of them continue. Yeah. Yeah, and are competitive. Yeah. I mean, like Bubba we, was tight, but like Bubba, Bubba could drive to the yeah, front. Yeah, we could, we could, as long as we had people in Denny front of Hamlin us. Denny Hamlin wrecked three times. Yeah. I mean, and you could, like, in years past, we, we, we would have been, we would have been tore up. We would have been done trouble. You know, we probably would have been done or limping around the back. Um, but yeah, to your, like, to your point, we've seen that everywhere with this car. Like, you can, you can bounce it off some shit. And, like, unless, as long as you don't break a, a toe link or something, you're going to be in good shape. Brett, who would, what finishes would be on your top 10 list? Um, there's some, uh, obviously there's some Atlanta races, you know, that I, I love, I would have to go back and see who won and what year it was, but that, that, that track has produced some amazing racing. When you look at what Carl Edwards, Jimmy Johnson, Kevin Harvick, Jeff Gordon, um, I mean, those guys were able to do, there's a lot of Bristol races. I absolutely love clearly Darlington's one of my favorite tracks and that is probably the greatest finish in NASCAR history with Craven and Bush going around there. But I mean, it's just it's just a circumstance of the super speedway racing. It, is it one of the best finishes ever? Absolutely. Is it one of my top ten greatest races I've ever watched? No, it's just not. Well, let's kick off spot on spot off with a similar topic. Atlanta was the best next gen race so far. Freddie, spot on spot off. Uh, again, probably spot off. You know, I think. It was a great race, but it's a plate race. You know, it's it's the it's the best plate race we've had so far by far, I think. Um, but I, I enjoy I enjoy more of seeing the guys kind of on edge at mile and a half. So I think Charlotte was a great race a couple years ago or last year. Last year was um, good. You know, th there's been I think there's been races where you can look and see that the guys are driving the shit out of the car, and you're like, wow, that was that was impressive. It might not be a you know three thousandths of a second finish but what they did and, and competing like that with each other is i'd have to go back and look and see one to come to mind but i think again like i think the race was so good yesterday that it was just you know because of we're packed up you know plate package or speedway package whatever you want to call it um but yeah i don't i don't know that it was the best next gen race ever tj i don't think it was the yeah i don't i i don't know if i could ever give a plate race the best next gen race because there's just too many circumstances that that lead up to the finish to that and how somebody wins the race and the drivers aren't like I can't literally sit there and say that some guy just got up on the wheel of that race and out drove everybody that right I can't say that so um, great race great finish but I don't think it's I, it's yeah I don't think it's the best next gen race. I mean, it's perspective. It's not that we don't like it. It's not that oh, we don't I appreciate it. it. I loved it. Yeah. Um, and I don't want fans to take it the wrong way. Is it the best super speed speedway? Best super <laughs> speedway. <laughs> we can't it's the best super speedway race with this generation of car by far, hands down. But it's not my favorite race in this this generation of car. It's just not. I mean, give me a give me a slick Charlotte, or give me somewhere that the tires wear off at Darlington. You know, I mean, that it's as a racer, you know, and, and obviously I'm a fan too. a lot of these weekends. But as a racer, uh, there's a lot more that goes into it than what it takes to win that race. Spot on, spot off. Daniel Suarez saved to see that track house with this Atlanta win. Brett. Oh, man, there's a lot of talk about this. Um, I mean, I had Daniel Suarez on my list, and I'll give you guys a list so there's no confusion. Here's drivers I had on the hot seat. Austin Sendrick. Austin Dillon. Austin's your third in points, by the way. I know. So two this five. this is preseason. This is yeah, my yeah. this is my oh, list yeah, preseason. Drivers on the high seat. Austin Sendrick, Austin Dillon, all of Stuart Haas Racing. If Busher wins multiple races, Brad Keslowski. Brad's obviously the owner. Uh, Daniel Suarez. That's all the, the, uh, the bigger name drivers that I had on my there on the hot seat list. Daniel Suarez goes out and wins the second race of the year, locks himself into the playoff, locks himself into the all star race. It's going to get a lot of hype. Uh, he didn't lock himself into the playoffs yet. But. Well, I mean, unless something really stupid happens, he's locked himself into the playoffs. Um, he's under a lot of pressure because Ross Chastain has won four races 
in the amount of time that going into yesterday, Daniel had won one. Ross tends to be up front a lot. Daniel does not. SVG comes in and wins in his first ever road race in the same equipment. They've won seven races as an organization in the last three years. Um, I don't know what Zane because and, and I look at this thing and I go, well, what do you do with all? What do you do with with Suarez if he's under contract with Trackhouse, but he doesn't have a seat in the ninety nine? Well, you'd swap seats with him and Zane Smith, wouldn't you? Yeah, you could. Could. Obviously, SVG's under contract. So charter wise, Trackhouse has way more drivers than they have charters. So that tells me somebody screwed. It's either somebody that like a Zane Smith or SVG or it's Suarez. I think right now Suarez needs to go win one more race to be 100% locked in. He's got to go be competitive at all these other places to, to stay, for me to say he's solidified in the car that he's in. Now, Matt Swindersky is his crew chief. This is Matt, Matt and him just got hooked up. Matt came from RCR. He went to college racing. A lot of people know this about Matt. He also worked for Elon Musk. He built rockets. This guy is f-ing smart. Um, I worked with Matt. We actually won uh, the race together with A.J. Allmendinger at the Indianapolis Road Course a few years ago with Colleague Racing. Uh, I think he's going to be a huge asset to that organization. I think um, he was the smartest guy at Colleague Racing. I don't mean anything by that. I don't mean to discount, you know, Lenny and, and Alex and Bruce Slicker and everybody else that's over there, but I thought he was the smartest guy at Colleague Racing, and he left to go to Trackhouse. I think that's going to benefit Casey Daniel Suarez a ton, but Daniel's going to have to show up for me to say he's solidified in this particular car um, for a long time and, and win more races. But here's the thing we don't know. How much money does Daniel still have behind him? When he came into the sport with Joe Gibbs Racing, he came in with a company called Aris, which was backed by Carlos Slim. It was over $20 million. They sponsored Carl Edwards and Cup. They sponsored somebody in Xfinity. I believe it was Suarez. Yeah. And then they sponsored Suarez and Trucks. They wrote a big check. How much money has he still got with him? Because it still takes money to race too. So you're spot off. You don't agree that this is. I'm, I don't think not in this particular car. I'm not saying he won't stay a track house driver. I'm not saying he won't stay a part of the family. But I don't think he stays in this car unless he can can prove himself to be competitive and run up front, top tens every week or a lot of weeks, and be a contender. I I, I, I agree from the what we just talked about. You know, this was not a. I don't want to take anything away because I thought he did a good job. I don't think he had the fastest car. I think he was the one of the most aggressive guys at the end, and that's what got him the win. Um, but it's still circumstantial. Like he's he's one Bubba Wallace push away from you know not winning that race. So you know third place ain't saving his job. So it's just you know I I think I think a lot of it depends on the success of SVG, the success of Zane Smith this year. You know if Zane goes out, Zane hasn't had a great start to his year. Um, you know, obviously we'll see, we're going to get a better idea of like TJ said earlier of what everybody really has when we go to the races, you know, in the coming weeks. But, you know, if them guys kind of, you know, have a mediocre season in Xfinity or Zane cup, you know, there's no point in, you're not going to take one of them to replace Daniel, uh, especially after coming off the playoff season. But I, I agree with Brett, this doesn't, I, I don't know that this does a lot, you know, it doesn't lock them in by any means to that 99 car in the future. Yeah. I don't think this, to me, this doesn't really change a whole lot yet. Um, if he would have won the Daytona 500, I'd say that probably helped. That'd be that's cha- well, I, <clears> that's, <throat> that's crazy. That's, yeah. So, to me, Todd, Todd Gilliland had a more impressive <clears throat> day, excuse me, than what uh, you know the comp- the win at the end there. I think Todd, uh, what what his day was, running up there with the front guys, slicing and dicing there a bit, leading a lot of laps. Um, that was more impressive to me than. You know, a three wide finish, no matter which one of them guys win. Nothing against them. Great race to the end. But, like, what, you know, for Todd, if you would have told me that Todd was going to lead that many laps at the beginning of the race, I'd have been like, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. So I don't <laughs> think anybody would have thought he'd lead that many. You, you know, last year, I think Todd got a little chip on his shoulder last year when they he took did. him out of that 38 car yeah. for whatever Zane's races were going to be because I felt like you've seen his performance step up, especially the second half of last year, to where, where front row basically had no choice but to put him back in that 38 car. Yeah, he was running good. You know, and, and now you see the speed. Obviously, we're going to see what the, what the Fords have at a mile and a half now. That was kind of, the, I think, their struggle point a little bit last year. And, you know, we'll see what they have going forward now. But to, to start the year off, I thought Todd did a great job in the Daytona 500. He was up there in contention all day long. He was up there yesterday all day long. I seen he tweeted out he made he felt like he made one mistake yesterday that cost him a good finish. Um, I'm sure he got the, I'm thinking he got caught up in one of the yeah. wrecks late, right? Um, but yeah, like I said, like I think last year, I think when they took him out of that car for 
whatever it was, six or eight races, and he just got sent over to Rick Ware. I think it was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to show you guys. And, and at the end of the year, he left them no choice but to put him back in there yeah. full time. And you can't really look at points right now. Points and yes, are. I read <clears throat> Justin Marks' comments when he said Daniel Suarez is – is going to be here. Those are sometimes some of the worst words you can ever hear. You know, I can't he, tell you how many times I've heard, "Oh, Freddie's our guy. Freddie, Freddie's going to be coming back here next year." Yeah, and then nobody yeah. calls Freddie to tell him he's fired. So you know, I you say <laughs> a you, early for that. Say you can't look at points yet, TJ. But I was I was watching some show. I can't. I think it was truck pre race, maybe or qualifying. Trevor Bain made a point of like I think after after race two or three, only two guys that were outside of the top sixteen in points made the playoffs. So like I, maybe it might have been race three or four, but like it was it was it was early in the year that only two or three guys bumped in from that were out of the playoffs. So you get, there's a lot of guys that are buried right now that are going to have to work their way yeah, out. Yeah, but you got to look. We've had we've had two races and both of them had huge wrecks. That took oh, out yeah. a lot of I'm cars. Not, I'm, I'm, I'm Here, not here's who's way out: Tyler Reddick, 26th in points; Joy Logano, 33rd in points; uh, Austin Dillon, 35th in points; and Kislowski, 36th in points. Yeah, big names, a lot of funding. So they're, I mean, you look at it, they're not going to, I mean, they, they have to go on a hell of a run here to be in the top 16 in the next two or three weeks. So if that stat holds true where, you know, the, the people that are in the top 16 after five races kind of stay the top 16 and without, a, you know, a couple exceptions, that, that's a hole to dig out of. Moving on, spot on, spot off. There was not a caution during the pit cycle wreck between McDowell and Byron. <laughs> I mean, I... I didn't – when I looked over there, Did there they was crash? already I, – See, I didn't see it happen. Yes. I think we were on the other side. Should have been a caution. So. They hit the wall. <laughs> to both of them. <laughs> and one of them barely got above the racing line. He got off the apron and onto the racing line. But they, Why was there but not But they a kept going, right? They were stopped. And then they got going They were again. both stopped. And listen, here's where I – it should have been a caution. Now, listen, <clears throat> it would have benefited me greatly if it was a caution, so I'm obviously probably swayed on this idea. <laughs> but – but it hurt like Ty Gibbs, Hirschman standing next to me. Ty Gibbs coming to pit road with the pack, middle of the pack, had to stop or, or track sp- block. The track is blocked to get on pit road. So now he loses the draft because he had to stop because two guys that had nothing to do with him in front of him wreck. That should be a caution. We talk about this all the time. I get it. You don't want to throw the yellow because of the pit cycle. That should not factor into the caution throw the flag decision. Like it's they two guys wrecked. The 34 hit the wall. Both cars had damage. Neither one of them were competitive the rest of the day. And you have the thir- the twenty four kind of sitting up on the apron above that white line that they have on the on the apron for pit road, like h- how is this not a caution? If TJ had been the if TJ had been Ty Dillon, oh he'd been I meant Ty, Ty Gibbs, Gibbs, he'd be pissed. Yeah, yeah, I'd probably be pissed. Yeah, I mean we all get pissed when something doesn't go your way on the track. That's just how it goes. It's just you know I, I we it, we it's not the caution flag is for crashes. It's not for ooh we don't want to throw it here because it's gonna really f- up our pit cycle. Like that, that should have nothing to do with it, and that's the only reason it wasn't. A when question. I looked over there, they were already rolling, so I wasn't. That's why. I mean, I didn't see them hit. Yeah. So what happened was the the thirty four is outside the twenty four. He locks up coming to pit road, so he hangs a left wheel hops, hangs a left, runs the two of them into the wall. They bounce off the wall, slide back up onto the, not to the racetrack, but like above the white line on the apron where the pit road is. Yeah. They sit there for a minute, then they get fired up and get going. And but I mean, still like Ty Dillon got screwed. There's I'm sure there's other people in that mess that were. Well, I mean, I don't know how long they sat there, but like if like I'm not saying they, they I mean, to me, if they're sliding up towards the racing surface, I probably would have thrown it then. What, I mean, when have we ever seen a car stopped on? I mean, they, the Saturday night they could have easily, you know, as soon as the 39 stopped at a fuel, the yellow was out. Yeah, so he's on pit road. He's, he's coming to pit road. He's stopped. The 34 is stopped at the entry to pit road. No yellow after hitting the wall after hitting the wall. Yeah, my stepdad looks at me. He goes, how's that not a caution? I said, well, let me give you my opinion. (laughs) Some cars had already pitted. Some cars were out there wide open, and some guys were in the process of pitting. And if they hit that little button that makes the yellow lights come on, they're going to have a mess on their hands of figuring out who goes where. And they don't want to take 20 minutes to figure that out. They want – they pr- they're praying that these two cars that just hit the wall and wrecked get going quick enough for them not to have to do that. And that's what I think happened. Yeah. How do you solve for that then? You throw the yellow when cars crash. And then you're 20 minutes out from trying you're to figure out? You're not going to be 20 minutes. But it, it, listen, if that's what it is, it is. You know what I mean? If it, if I would have been on the other side of it and got burned by it, I would have been pissed. But I would have been like, all right, you know, they wrecked. What are you gonna do? It's, a, it's a bad luck situation. 
But you know, it, it, like when when cars crash, I, like I said, you you have a car stopped on pit road the night before, you throw the caution immediately. You have a car stopped on pit road the next day, you don't. If a car is sliding up into the groove, it has to automatically be a caution for me. I'm probably if they're if the guys get it rolling and at a fairly decent, if they stop for any period of time and don't move, you got to throw it right away. But if they if the drivers make a good, at, I mean, if they stop and you know, get, oh, I'm straight, I'm going, and they do that, then I understand why they're why. You know, there's a little bit of area there because you don't want to throw it if you don't have to. And if the guys do a good job of getting it going, yeah, it's just you know, you're, you're you know. both <clears throat> listening to NASCAR during this process. Did they at least key up? No, I don't think so. Well, they talked about it because I heard oh, them saying they, somebody called. No, in, they they talked about it. They turned three clear or something like that. Yeah, the officials rest. did. The officials. I'm asking. Did, did, I'm asking. Did the tower key up to potentially throw? I the think coach? they said no. I think they just said. Is turn three clear after they got rolling? That's what the again. tower said. Yeah, they were watching, and then the other guy. Well, the other two officials, they did. I think there was two people that checked in and said, "Backstretch clear, uh, three and fourths clear." And when they say that, I, don't, I mean, if you're the if your hands on the button, why do you throw it then? You know what I mean? Because you're going off your officials. I, I mean, I'm just saying if it, that's what you're going off. So of. you think it should not have been a caution? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, if I didn't see the wreck, so if, oh, okay. I, if there was a guy sliding up to the groove, then. He, I don't he know. wasn't gonna. I don't. I don't know. He was. He was going towards the group. I don't know if he was ever gonna get to I the group. I think he barely got. He got just like to barely the right at it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if if everything's still fluid and moving, if a guy hits the wall and stops, you gotta throw. Listen, it. I knew they weren't throwing the yellow. You just said if yeah. a guy hits the wall and stops, you gotta throw a yellow. Well, that's if he comes to a complete stop. Like, they yeah. Did. I mean, they did. But if he's if he instantly starts moving, like he's trying to keep up, like he's. You're, well, which one is it? Is it a complete stop, or is it if he comes to a stop moving? If he hits the wall and his car is messed up where he can't move, but if he brushes the wall and stops and he's way out down by the down by the um, wall, I'm not probably throwing it until I know. So. Well, let's listen to some of the best calls from our reaction the other line. Oh, boy. I hear there were a lot. This what did you say, Jay? How many? Uh, last night when I checked, we had 279. Have we introduced Jay yet? Jay Smith, our new yeah. our producer. We have introduced him when you gave him the reaction theater number. He doesn't talk. We need to get him out of his number. shell a little bit much. over there. We don't, I don't know what his deal is. He don't, he's got a voice. I, he's afraid to speak because, Jay, he went to Clemson. And I think every time he... <laughs> no, listen, I, they, I, they hired me to uh, keep Brett in check, <laughs> just like uh, Clemson's been keeping South Carolina uh, in check. Oh, here we go. Well, if you I think was, you're going to keep me in check, you're going to get fired. <laughs> I'm just warning you. I was worried about him last week when he showed up to the studio with a Clemson <laughs> jacket on. 200 and something? I, I haven't been mugged yet. No, yeah, not yet. We'll see. It might be coming. <laughs> Welcome to Hot Atlanta, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't like that race right there, I don't know what's the matter with you. Your mama combed your hair funny, and you must not love Jesus. <laughs> Them boys on Saturday said they couldn't run the inside line. I think the boys today proved that you could run the inside all you wanted to. Atlanta is the best track on the series, bar none. And from somebody who's been going there for the last 15 years, the crowd today was heavier than it's been in 10. I'll give them that. It was a very good crowd yesterday. Yeah. I have a feeling the the fall race is so gonna my be. unpopular opinion is I still prefer old Atlanta like same I prefer old Atlanta tires wearing out having to watch guys drive the hell out of it like I listen I love spotting that race yesterday we keep I can't I don't want to I feel like we're keep being negative about this race I loved that race last night I thought that that was the most fun I've had spotting a, in three years probably but I still prefer like natural true racing and i prefer a car like a track where tires wear out and but listen if if, if that if that show is packing the house wow, keep doing it bring it to Texas is that too. is it gonna wear out or tires gonna ever come back to my i don't know. race it seemed they seem to struggle with tire wear a little bit more but i, I think, don't think it's bad enough i yet. agree with danny to where if it does start to wear out they will do something to the track to bring it back like wow. a, a sealer, sealer or or, or you know the, uh, whatever that is, PJ one yeah, resin, right. whatever it is. But I feel like if I feel like if it gets to that point where where it start, I agree with Danny that they'll do something to the track. Holy <laughs> air speed, air <laughs> speed, mother. <laughs> I, I don't know what air speed means, uh, Brett. But uh, what a fantastic freaking race, man! Congrats to Daniel Suarez. Um, he needed that and. Uh, like to welcome Ross Chastain, Ross Chastain back to the uh, Don't Give a f- Tour. And uh, I'm going to get back to my beer. Y'all have a good one. 
<laughs> so, so on that note, the Ross Chase oh. incident. What in the so, world? I don't know if TV did a good job covering it. Bubba and Ross were battling for the lucky dog. Right. And we were back and forth. Like we I, we got stuck behind him for a little bit. So then we got to the middle and we were we were trying we were outside of him. And then all that was was Ross aggressively trying to push Chase to get back in front of Bubba because the caution could come out at any time, obviously. And and that that's what that came from. I don't know. I think I heard Mike Joy mention it after the fact during one of the replays that oh you know look here's what was going on here you know Bubba and and Ross are basically side by side for the Lucky Dog and obviously we all got back and I think we all finished at one point it was we were we got trapped lap down because Bubba spent on we have maybe my one idiot of the week should have been Bubba because we have all these different lights for pit road and the only part like to get to his box and then leaving his box is just all green all the way out and his dumbass sped leaving. Like, well, there's 47 light changes from the entrance of pit road to your box. Nails all of them. All green leaving. Nope, that was too hard. we got to speed. So i got to give a about that. But um, what the hell were we even talking about? I can't remember. The now. Chase and Ross. Oh, so yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, but the, but the eight, the 47, the one, and us were all battling for the lucky dog, and we oh, all yeah. finished in the top ten. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was looking at it. I'm like, well. I told Brad at one point, there's a really good race going on back here for the Lucky Dog right now. <laughs> we, I mean, that was probably the hardest I spotted all day was trying because we had to start at the tail, obviously. And then yeah. you're driving well, back up there. That's a lot of pressure, though. You're driving back up there. I mean, you're racing for the – you feel like you're racing for the win. because you're. But it's funny because nobody else has any idea what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, her, luckily, Hirsch was next to me. One time, he, like, blocked us or something. And I'm like, hey, dumbass, I'm racing the one for the Lucky Dog. So he's like, oh, shit. So then like, Ty kind of gets out of the way and gets behind us and starts helping a little bit. But, like, there's 20 <laughs> guys out there that have no idea what you're doing. And me, us and the one. They don't have time to know what yeah, you're doing. us and the Ross are f- cutting through the field and filling holes we probably shouldn't be filling. <laughs> so I, I was told last week, Jay, you can confirm this maybe, that we had 87 cuss words. 97. 97. It was, over yes. Yeah. Yes, I over did. Over 100. It was, it was over 100 different I did want to beliefs. congratulate you guys. You, oh. you did break a record yeah. with well, Bubba. Well, Bubba. Bubba contributed. He's Bubba was for the, the problem. For the most curse words. <laughs> I, think it, I think it was that bourbon. Once <laughs> that bourbon it. came out, y'all yeah. got a little bit loose-lipped. I had, uh, I had actually made a deal with myself over the winter. I wasn't going to cuss on here anymore. Good well, chance. I think, I, I think we should do a little change jar each time. Nah, we had that. Nobody put any money in there. I don't care. We'd go, Jay. I went to South Carolina. Actually, I think Brett just put a hundred in to begin with, and that uh, was it. Like he covered himself for a while. Yeah, here we I go. There he, ain't no change in these pockets, Jay. This is what happens when you go to South Carolina. Uh, this is what South Carolina degrees pay. <laughs> Show me that. Get your wallet out. Let's see. The, let's see what. Look, they're still coming. As if Brett isn't a big enough ass. <laughs> this makes Mike is laughing in the corner. Just hey, USC education pays well. He would probably has like ten bitcoins. Yeah, <laughs> that's all he's got. That's so that's it. all monopoly money. It's not real. <laughs> he emptied his bank account on the way over. Yeah. <laughs> It's completely <laughs> dry. You guys get some interesting calls on the show. Um, this is for one. Sure, but uh, I'm a returning fan, not because of Netflix, but actually because I listened to your podcast as recommended by a friend. And as my second race back, I think it's been great so far this year. Um, and I think I'm going to be here to stay after this one. Thanks, guys. I appreciate Good that. One. No, I think Noah tweeted at us. I, I think we... I remember sharing that, I think, on Twitter or seeing that he was listening to Dirty Mo podcast or something like that. So welcome back. Hope yeah. you enjoy. Hopefully the next couple of weeks live up to I'd like to go ahead and apologize for the rest of the season of this show. <laughs> that's like, that's so like sorry. Bubba saying last week, he doesn't listen to podcasts. Like if you have an interest in something, you know, what whatever that may be, if it's building sandcastles, you, there has to be a great podcast to help you be a better sandcastle builder. So if you love something, like I mean, I love college football. I listen to multiple college football podcast um but if you're a race fan and you're not listening to this podcast what are you doing what are you doing i think i never two, know what you're doing two big in there. problems <laughs> two big problems with bubba was i think that he doesn't ever want to hear me speak except for and he doesn't want me to talk on radio anyway um but did you, did you venmo him that money for me i did oh. yeah um i figured that's why you have all them uh, i just realized now i owe you four hundred dollars <laughs> for what and I have all this money in my pocket is going getting ready to go to Freddy. So, so, uh, so, um, yeah. But, and the other thing is, like, the guy is, uh, he, do you ever hear the music he listens to? We can't touch his judgment on anything. The right. head banging <laughs> Yes. Screaming. It's a whole different level of head banging. Like, I grew up in the 80s and 90s when, like, Iron Maiden was, like, 
hard rock, heavy metal. <laughs> not not Bubba. He listens to like oh, concussion protocol yeah. <laughs> metal. He listens to the stuff you can't even understand what they're yeah. saying. Do you guys? We well, should bring back the videos. Remember him, and, him and Blaney? Blaney. There's a buddy of him and Blaney, and like Bubba's yeah. playing the drums, and Blaney is just sounds like the devil is coming out of him. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know, even I know what he's saying. What is coming out? I don't know what's happening. Uh, you can't. Well, they do, and they do like those goat seances and shit. Right? <laughs> Can you give us an impression, Brett? Can you do it? <laughs> Can you say goat on fire? Was that what you were saying? <laughs> I don't think you could say that. <laughs> Pete is going to be after us. <laughs> Oh. Peter was mad that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift went to the zoo. Did you see that? <laughs> oh. God. I'm sweating. Is it hot in here? <laughs> <laughs> oh. New are intro. We, are we going up there? Go up there. Are we done? <laughs> oh. Please tell me there's more calls. <laughs> Y'all want to hit a couple more? Oh, yeah. Sure. Just keep going. Yeah, we, please. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why you roll into Atlanta, ready to raise hell and praise Dale. That's why you go 12 beers deep on a Sunday afternoon, knowing you got to work tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why you make friends with Dale and Bill behind you, knowing that those two are idiots during the rest of the six days a week. But on that Sunday, all that matters is we're cheering on the same team, racing. And that was racing, ladies and gentlemen. That finish today was absolutely phenomenal. You couldn't ask for anything better, and you will not see it again. Savor this moment. Atlanta's on top. These drivers are on top. We all worked hard today. The grill was rolling. The beers were flowing. And that racing was good. Damn good. Here's to you. Congrats to Suarez. I love that call. That sounded yeah. it reminded me of the preacher from before the race. <laughs> Dude, that guy was yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. It was good. <laughs> that was a pep talk. Yeah. Reminded it was me, actually really, of, really good. It sounded like Stephen A. <laughs> yeah. That's what it sounded like. That did it sound like Stephen A. <laughs> Oh boy! Can we finally stick a fork in this narrative that Atlanta sucks or Atlanta was ruined? Because I know damn well all of your motherfuckers were hooping and hollering in your living room, scaring the shit out of your kids and pets for that finish. Yeah, I mean, listen, it, it and before last night the racing wasn't that great, but maybe as it wears, it's going to get better. I don't know, but. It, it, it was it was a hell of a race last night. I'll give it that. All right, we got one more call. One more. Man, that was one of the best finishes I think I've ever seen. Man, I I, 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 I watched the movie Cars growing up, and man, to to see life imitate art that that was that was amazing. Like I, I was on the edge of my seat. I was holding my breath. I was I was jumping up in the air after they crossed the start finish line. And for the first time in a long while, I legitimately had no clue who the hell won once they crossed the start finish line. And I, I'm usually pretty good at that, but oh my goodness, that that was amazing. And uh, I thought Blaney won. The way the momentum looked, I, so did, so did yeah. I was like Blaney won. So did Clint. You know, Clint, Clint still, yeah, he still today thinks Blaney won. I think. <laughs> uh, on that note, I saw Clint at the track. He is the only person that will still whistle at a girl to get their attention. But he, I told That's him, nice of him. Yes, I told him he needs he needs to he needs to come on the show to keep you in line. And I can think you we, whistle, Casey? I cannot whistle. I look. I'm looking at you as you're saying that. I'm like, I bet she can't. I whistle. Can, I cannot whistle. I'm you so bet sorry. She can't whistle. Chloe can. Um, but why can't you whistle? I don't know. Do you, I'm just not. Skilled. Do you think try? That, <laughs> what percentage of people can't whistle? There's got to be a percentage out there. <laughs> I can whistle. Anybody else in this room? Not I can't. Whistle? I can't do that really loud whistle with your hand. Like, oh no, my brother. Can, my brother will deafen you when he does that. <laughs> Seriously, you can't wow. whistle. I can whistle. You're I the mean. only dude I know that can't whistle, Blake. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, do you He's think, never whistled so do you girl. think do you think coming to the line you yeah, obviously I got the cars tour thing uh, the cars tour shout out to the cars tour <laughs> how about the shitty cautions I'm, I'm looking forward yeah. to that. the <clears throat> cooler cautions that's actually good um, yeah. but uh, the cars movie I got that thing sent to me 25 times last night of lightning yeah. sticking his tongue you Kyle think Kyle had his, had his tongue. tongue stick out did you see the best part of last night I thought was Kyle his re race recap was like you know, you know, great race for us. Just came up a couple inches short, and Samantha responded. So I've been telling you that for twenty years. Yeah, <laughs> it, according to Samantha, <laughs> according to Samantha, we better hope Kyle's giving his tongue. <laughs> wow. 
That was great. Uh, that was great. Uh, but one. I think we both, Clint and I both agree, you just need to get off Twitter. So. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Why would he do that? Oh. Ooh. All right. Well, d- don't forget to use our number to leave an audio message whenever you'd like. 704-802-9572. Keep those calls coming. Keep those impersonations coming. We would love to hear them. Moving on to Ask DBC. Use hashtag Ask DBC to ask any one of us a question. Um, we will keep picking the best ones each week. First one is from Hamill. It looks clear Front Row Motorsports has gained Tier 1 status in the Ford camp. So has SHR been demoted to Tier 2? And will that accelerate their rumored exit? Is that a rumor? Because I haven't heard it. It's rumored that they're... they're I wouldn't say exit. Exit, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I, they're definitely, I would assume they're still tier one partners right now, right? Correct. Stuart Haas. Um, but listen, if you see other teams around you getting promoted uh, and you're not running well, it, it, a demotion let's, or. Let's pump the brakes on us still, though. We've ran two plate races. Oh, basically. yeah, no, for so, sure. Yeah, I, I don't think TJ sounds bitter about this front row motorsports recent success. No, it's just plate they, racing. They left RFK <laughs> and now all of a sudden it's fast. We're, we're literally plate racing still, so. <laughs> If you can, if you can tell me anything off these first two weeks on how it's going to be at Phoenix and Vegas, then uh, I don't. I, 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 I haven't heard that Stuart Haas is exiting, and all I'll say to that is Gene Haas is a billionaire. He can do whatever with a bunch of bees, and he can do whatever he wants to do. Um, Tony, obviously, Tony was at the track yesterday, so it doesn't look like he's removed himself. I don't. I, I don't think Tony's very involved in the day to day stuff, you know, and I could clearly be wrong but last i heard he was not overly involved in all the the day-to-day stuff um obviously he said some things publicly put some pressure on people that have been there for a while that you guys need to get the cars faster and listen fast cars fix everything but when you look at their stable of drivers they have four drivers how many combined wins do they have in the cup series with these four drivers they have one one chase briscoe one at phoenix yeah right so and that's off the top of my head uh, there could be more out there that I don't know. But, man, you don't have a lot of depth behind the wheel. You don't have a lot of winning success behind the wheel. And other than Harvick last year having a few flashes of speed, overall they were pretty slow. Now you've got a brand-new nose to deal with. So talk about going into a race with a lot of unknowns, TJ. You're really doing it with Stuart Haas Racing this weekend. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think um, <clears throat> I do think I do think the Josh Berry and Rodney Childress con- connection can. I do think it has a. I do think they can grow and become really competitive. So you think Josh Berry's as good as Kevin Harvick? No, I don't think. I mean, not right now. He's not. But do, you do think I think he, he can, can be? Get, well, I mean, yeah. You never know what the ceilings are on these guys till they get in it. I mean, if you go by, if you go, looked at Jimmy Johnson's Xfinity career, Bush career back then. Would you, would you say I wouldn't gonna, have hired him exactly so <clears throat> you know you, you just never know but and that's what they're I mean maybe he does grow in it maybe maybe all three or four of them do you know I, I think Chase uh Chase showed signs I don't know what they were why I kind of think I know what they were doing when he was quick right there but he showed you know he can, he can get up there run he was up there yesterday so I mean, I, I do think there's signs of growing there, but it's going to be tough with a lot of young guys. I think the biggest thing that they're going to struggle with this year, and we've, we've mentioned this on here a thousand times, you know, like Brett said, you got new nose, new, new front end of these cars. You don't have a baseline. You don't, yeah. you don't have the Kevin Hart. Like, if, if the four of them go out there and don't run well, wh- who should be? Like, if, if they went out there last year and Kevin sucked and, you know, like, and the other three sucked, you go, oh, we've got a problem because we know Kevin Harvick's a bad – like he's he can drive yeah. this thing. You know that veteran you know, that can tell so, you. So so now yeah. you've got who, who's the most veteran guy? Chase, I guess. Yeah. Chase Briscoe's the veteran. Uh, maybe maybe Priest might have more starts because he was in Trinity PG. But you've got more top ten as a driver than he does probably. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing against Ryan Priest, but but he doesn't have his stats suck. Yeah, his cup stats suck. He's a hell of a race car driver. He's a good dude, but his cup stats are terrible. Yeah, and but so you don't have you don't have that baseline to where we go. Well, we know it ain't the car. We know it ain't the car, because, or we know it ain't the drivers because this guy. Look at Kevin. You know, so it's just you. That's what they're going to be missing the most, I think, this year. I agree with you. But you just can't replace that. No, it's in, and, you and, can't. And like, and, and like, there's not that many guys out there. You know, what I mean, no. there's not there's you know I don't guys know, like that or a guys place are, yeah for a long time, and they just have that. I mean, you just can't replace it. 
and it's going to be tough without it for sure. This next one is from Robert. With Joey Logano's web gloves being found, can you recall any other driver safety gear or gear-related advantages being discovered recently? No. <laughs> I, don't think. I mean, I don't think there's any way to really – that's the first, honestly, gear-related thing that I've heard of that was an advantage. Yeah. I mean, what kudos, else could you kudos do? Kudos to them for, for – for Well, I mean, it. you did have a lot of weight in your helmet. Who did? Time. I know. I don't even use well, a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think one would fit. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> that would be that would probably be the closest thing you could think of. That's guys, it, guys would be filling <clears throat> helmet bags and stuff up pre-race with weight to get through, and then pulling it out for the race. But, yeah, um, that's probably the closest thing. Next one is from Wayne. How come there was two, three, and four wide racing with the cup cars, but the trucks and Xfinity cars couldn't even run two wide? I think we talked about it earlier. Yeah. I think, you know, and one of the other things that played into it was we talk, we talk about this cup car. It, it's usually stuck to the racetrack. It drives better probably than the Xfinity car. So, you know, we watched, like Brett said earlier, or TJ might have said it, like the, the Xfinity race last year, we all went down and turned three and almost were all wrecked. You know, mm -hmm. everybody blew up, you know, shoved up a lane and we almost ran each other over. So, you know, the, the cup car being a little more stable probably lended itself to this two-by-two two racing as well. If you watch, like, a Daytona race, like, I think I might have said it before, if you look at the drafting lines, watch a cup race compared to an Xfinity race or even a truck race. The cup guys, for the most part, man, they are squared up. They don't move a lot. They are very accurate with where they're at on the racetrack. You get some of these other races. I mean, tell me what a, what Exeter Turn Four looks like in an ex, in a truck race from the guy on the bottom. You know what I mean? That yeah. guy's coming up. <laughs> yeah, and they're and then they come up, they slide up, and then what do they do? They go back down. And there's always movement like these. Cup guys are really good. And man, uh, and seeing four, I mean, they're getting more comfortable there, as you can tell as well, because now we're seeing a four wide, and man, they're leaning on each other, and they're not lifting, like. They're in, like I'm like oh they're four wide it's gonna end like no they're still four wide no they're still four wide down the back stretch we got on the outside of one time and I'm like I think you're three I think you're four wide still but I can't really tell and they were still four wide and they I mean it was there was a lot of great driving on display yesterday yeah for sure who do we have on our what an idiot list this week uh, who you guys got. I've ended up with multiple people again for two weeks I, in a row. I, hey, you're taking you're it away. I try not to do that, but I usually just have one what an idiot, and I look down at it, and I go, oh, yeah, that's my what an idiot. Like I really had my, – my leader of the week was whoever won't let us practice. And then my second leader of the week was Eddie Gossage for saying nah. that the Netflix documentary is bad for NASCAR because of the cussing. What an idiot! Nice like it's it's two thousand twenty four. I think that, and I think that it had to do with the person that was featured in the. Because you remember last year he had some <laughs> stuff to say about Denny. I forget exactly what it was. Yeah, he threw and shade. Then Denny was the one that was primarily doing some of the cuss, most of the cussing, probably in the next licks. So I don't think there's a coincidence there. I mean, I, I guess Eddie doesn't go watch rated R movies. <laughs> yeah, he promoted fights forever i mean come watch this race look at this fight then the pinata thing happened in victory lane where they handed daniel suarez this taco which i thought looked really cool and i didn't know what it was and then he didn't know what to do with it like pinatas <laughs> have to be hit with something somebody's got to hold it and let them the whack the hell out of it so that celebration was garbage put it, put it in front like of the you six. got ross smashing put it water. in front of the six we'll take care of it <laughs> <laughs> you damn sure know how to smash stuff. <laughs> Just throw it at the six car. But, like, you got Ross <laughs> smashing watermelons off his roof, and you got Daniel, like, picking lettuce out of a <laughs> pinata off a taco. Um, you know what would have been cool? Is but then last night the I was laying in bed. Oh, here we go. We're still going. Oh, I know. Yeah. Then yeah. last night I was laying in bed, and I was like, oh, boy. how in the hell is Dale Earnhardt Jr. not signed up by now to be a commentator for NBC. Like who It's easy, they won't pay him with gift cards. Who at NBC? This guy was on Olympic broadcast. He was at the Kentucky Derby. He's obviously at Daytona. I mean, he's, he's everywhere with NASCAR. And we're not going to sign up the biggest name in this generation to be a commentator. We're going to let this guy just not commentate. So whoever that is, and I'm not trying. I'm not trying to get in trouble and get fired, Dale Jr. For I'm not taking up for you here because you're 
you're already rich, you're already successful. But I just don't know how we don't have Dale Jr. locked up to be a broadcaster because as a fan of the sport, and Dale Jr., TJ knows how lazy Dale Jr. could be. He'd sleep before four in the afternoon every day um, back in the day. Not now that he's got kids. But this guy works his ass off to be a historian of the sport, an ambassador for the sport. He watches all these old YouTube videos. He goes back through all these old pictures. Like, I don't know of any broadcaster, maybe Larry Mack, that's ever worked that hard around here. So somebody signed Dale Jr. up. I want to hear him say, slide job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like he is the the – Probably the most important person in our sport right now, I would assume. Like, I agree. Uh, and he's got to be a part of it somehow, I hope, anyway. Uh, idiots. I don't even know who I had. Oh, I was going to. So it's we're, pretty light we're, week. we're running along here, so I'm not going to. I was going to call Weatherman and ask him if he had pants on because I was going to give mm. the Yaley's crew chief. I don't know what he meant to say, but he said, like, yeah. So Weatherman, I, it was going to be a toss-up whether I gave it to Weatherman or if I gave it to the crew chief because Weatherman does shove JJ. I don't know where they're running f- 20 something probably 15 i don't know somewhere back not in the fleet pack and jj kind of runs up on somebody so he kind of gets off center and then weatherman dumps him um so that wasn't I- ideal but then the crew chief goes on this tirade on the pit box and he says i'm gonna go down there and talk to him about the race and he better have his pants on the f- that mean? what's that mean <laughs> <laughs> so I so I was gonna call Kyle and ask if he had pants on this morning, but then the crew chief went down and tried to get into a fight with him, and I think he ended up getting tackled by a NASCAR official. Why? Um, why did he get tackled? Or no, why? Why he, was he gonna? Because I guess he didn't like the push that Weatherman gave JJ through the trial. Oh. I don't. It was like, listen, if that's the case, let JJ. If JJ wants to fight, by all means, let JJ go down there and fight. I don't think you can have crew chiefs going down trying to fight drivers. That's probably not a great look for yeah, our sport. Yeah, I don't really. Yeah. Um, my my what an idiot probably. I hate to say this because I, I we raced with them in Xfinity, but the the Ford uh, Xfinity crew chiefs. Um, I heard one radio transmission where they told Riley, like, yeah, the two's probably really close. You can go ahead and go after them. They played it on TV. Oh, did they? Yeah. And and every Ford ran out on the same lap. It was like four to go, so they weren't even close. And they're not only are they. I don't even know what they saved. I don't know how much Riley was saving, but like not enough. But it wasn't enough, and you can't tell you if you're not sure. You can't tell your guy, yeah, no, now go race. You know, maybe wait for the last lap to do that. But yeah, so every one of them ran out on the same lap. So their calculations are all accurate or <laughs> equal, I should say. But the I think the the three major we so both Sieg brothers, the double zero and the ninety eight, I'm pretty sure all ran out at the exact same time. Oh, wow. Who you got, you know, TJ? Man, it's honestly, there. It's been a it's been a pretty light week for. Wasn't as many idiots as I would expect here, but your teammate probably thinks somebody's an idiot. Which one? End of the second stage. For oh a cup? yeah, well he, yeah, I don't know if he'd blame the driver or the guy telling him that. Yeah, I didn't because I, I heard the guy got cleared, and then it was like clear, and then no, oh, not clear, and then it was so, too late. So no, I went back and listened last night, or actually Lambert had it on his on his. Uh, he said he gave me one of his earbuds, and it was it was a weird deal where Coleman and you could see the the twenty two is clear. But it's at a point in the corner where you can't really just hang a right yeah. and drive into the hole. So Coleman. It's just past Coleman, the center of one and two. Yeah, the car's kind of light there. Clears them, but then he starts telling them, you got to get there, you got to get there, you got to get there, you got to get there. And like the, yeah. you can hear the octaves go up, and then it's too late. Like, And I think yeah. at one point, you can see like right before they make contact, Joey lifts. Like you can see the flames come out. Like he realizes, oh, shit, like this isn't going to work. But then they're too close together. Joey continues yeah. to get tight, and then he comes across his nose. But. Yeah, that was not ideal and it, at that honestly, point in the race. No, yeah, it's for a stage. I mean, live to be there the rest of the race. I would I – mean, that's probably – that's pretty rough to do that. Um, that's probably up there. I would say that between that and the lifting on the front stretch when everybody's jammed up right at the beginning. <laughs> I mean, that, that's too early for that, man. We have – how many laps is there? 200. There's, there's just – wait, like, and it's – you know, Todd is not – we just talked about it, He's not the most experienced driver. There's just, you He's can, trying you, to you, do something nice, yes, but like – But there's way better ways. You, know, you do that in the yeah. corner. You know, you can't do that down the front straight no, away. You in do the it trial, on a corner but, exit. Like yes. when everyone checks up in the gaps, yeah, the corners, gaps are then you leave the gap, then he comes up on the exit of the corner. Yeah. Ugh, I want to go back real quick. Stuart Haas Racing. Um, okay. Which driver of the four finishes highest in points? I'll go first. I'll take Ryan Priest. I think Priest finishes highest. He sh- he showed a lot of speed last year. Um, I think he's – I think he fin- – because, I mean, there were a lot of races where you would – me and you would talk, Freddie, after the race, and you'd be like, man, Briscoe's back there racing with Rick Ware. Um, yeah. So, I'm, I, I, I'll, I'll pick Priest. Who you got? I think Priest – his, I think Priest will be there, but I, I, I think it's going to be Josh. I, think I do. I, I'll, I'll, I answer your question. I'm going to ask you just, just 
separate question. Uh, it's like being so a you're going to answer a question with a question. No, I'm going I'm to answer I'm gonna, the damn I'm gonna question, say, Freddie. I'm going to say Briscoe. I'm going to say Briscoe. Um, I just think he's he'll be a little more consistent this year. Hopefully they've got a little more speed. Um, over under 20th place. Ooh. 18th for Ryan Priest. Points. Are you saying over under for, for – Where they're going to finish in points. The highest guy we've, – we've agreed you say maybe Josh, but what is it going to be over under yeah, 20? I, hmm. I, I think – is 18 over or under in this situation? That's un- well, under. That's <laughs> under. Yeah. I'm going I- – I think it'll be right there. I do think it'll be right around 20th, honestly. So we don't think Stuart Haas is going to make playoffs? Not unless they sneak a win out somewhere. Because uh, what do you think? Where do you think Briscoe's at? Over or under 20? Over. Wow. I can't look at – uh, I'm the only optimist here. Knowing the drivers are, I can't look at any of them and say, okay, that guy's going to be really good at this track. I don't see any of that right now. You know, Priest will be good at the super speedways. He's pretty good at it. But I also I, th- I think Josh is sitting there soaking this all in. Noah's the wild card to me. He could – no. I mean, Noah's – I mean, he's going to be really aggressive. He's probably going to have a few more incidents, but I don't know. I'm going to look real quick and see where they were last year. But well, while you're looking, you I just look. want to brag that – we're only two races in, and I've already won a DBC pick. How do you know? I, I'm gonna jazz. Yeah, we don't got Whatever. no DBC. Whatever. No, no. It no, says Ricky it is, finished it six. Oh, it's on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. I'm, looking, I'm looking for our sheet. But here's how I smart Clipsland graduates are. Look, we'll look at the next piece of paper. Ad reads below, <laughs> and it's blank. <laughs> it's this, on the next this page. Is, this is – it says below, Jay. It doesn't say on the next page. I'll right. change it to say next page next week for you. Jay, we got you've got to dig up one of uh, his old sheets for the the DBC picks. Oh. Yeah, you, we need to be got, looking at it. We've got to find that. Yeah, yeah cause we, get that from Andrew. Because we don't know who we picked. We now. need it. Yeah. I don't even know who I picked it's right now. It's your two races in. Seriously. Hush. I don't even know who I picked the Daytona. I'm a, you're gonna make me hormonal. Oh, so y'all got to keep track of who yeah. you pick for Can men be yeah. hormonal? Not just oh, yeah. men can't yes. be hormonal. Yeah, that sheet he had, I'm sure he's got it. Congratulations he's got to, to Brett it. for winning Thank you, Atlanta Casey. with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Freddie, you finished second with Corey LaJoy. Boo. I got third <laughs> with Justin Haley. Who'd you have? Oh, Stenhouse is up front, yeah. I mean, TJ. I, I had TJ a, sucks. I had, I had, a, a, I had that one. By, <laughs> by the way, uh, 22nd, 23rd, and 30th. Last year in points. Eric, 22nd. Priest, 23rd. Briscoe, 30th wow. last year. All right. Wow. Harvick, 13th. Wow. All right. I got like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Who so are we, we picking for out. Vegas? <sighs> TJ, you go first because you finished last. Man, I don't, know, I don't even know who I got. Um, <laughs> I'll go with. This is hard because Ford and Toyota both have new noses. We don't know what to expect. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go with Christopher Bell. Christopher Bell. Is off the board. Casey. Bummer. Yeah. Who'd Tyler Reddick tell you to pick? <laughs> I know. Don't uh, look at me like Reddick that. Reddick didn't actually give me a suggestion this season. Wow. Um, yet. Bowman. Bowman. Bowman won there four years ago, right? Three years ago? No, 2022. Wow. Probably his last win. Freddie. Uh, He's going to pick one of the two that I want. But I'm going to pick the other one, so I'm not nervous. I don't know if I'm going to. He's going to pick the five or the 24. No, no. Oh, then I get one. I'm going to get the one I want then. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Uh, I will take 54, Ty Gibbs. Wow. That's uh, that's surprising. All right. You know, you're picking between these two guys now. Just pick your I'm pick. picking Kyle Larson. Okay. Interesting. What can we expect? Swing for the fence. Yeah, I don't think we all know yet. I don't Especially think we really know. With, with having practice, do you think that will help? Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it'll just make it all the world I, I mean, Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of glad we had a little bit of brightness. Yeah. I, mean, I think it's good. It's going to be good for the guys yeah. with new cars, new nose. You got to unload stuff. good. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. It's 20 minutes, right? Here's, so. what, here's what we're going to find out this weekend, Casey, is who's in and who's not. Because you're going to have guys, full-blown organizations go out there and just miss it. Because, like, in the Cup Series, you got the new noses. In the Xfinity Series, you got folks like Haley Deegan and SVG, and, you know, that they are easy to be relevant at a Daytona in Atlanta. Like, we're going to find out if their cars are fast and can they drive really fast, really quickly. For sure. In some of these scenarios. That and I'm excited. True. That's what I'm most excited about is seeing how that unfolds this weekend for these series and these drivers. Because there's a ton of unknowns. So, be fun. For sure. Be fun. 
Well, Can't wait. Vegas. Vegas. You coming? You going out there? I'm not going to Vegas. No, Ooh, I'm in Houston all God. week. Commodity Classic. Big uh, convention down there around agriculture. Can't wait. And then I'm actually not going to be here next Monday. I've got a procedure i got to do. So I apologize for missing stay, next week's uh, show. Stay away from the goats, please. Tungsten. Right. Too much tungsten. tungsten. Too much yeah. tungsten. Stay away from the goats from the goats. But I'll be back there. the Monday after Phoenix. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Be sure to catch us. The full episode on YouTube shortly, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Door Pepper Clear. YouTube, go to the YouTube channel. We gotta, we gotta catch Danny. Danny's, yeah, Danny's, yeah, got, Danny's got a little lead on us, but they, they, yeah, they announced change. theirs the day before ours, so they had a head start. I gotta find yeah. the YouTube channel. Oh, good, you're not subscribed. That's good. No I don't really know how to subscribe to that stuff. Yeah, you you click it's, but it's, it's tough. You get on there and there's this button that says subscribe. No, yeah. and ask you your click kid. On just it. ask your kid to do it because they'll be like, oh yeah, smash that like button. So and subscribe, if I right? go onto my iPad, my computer, and my phone, is that three subscriptions? No, I think that's one subscription. All right, I'll subscribe. Thank y'all for listening. Have a great week. We out. All right. See ya.